That ought to lock that scumbag of a brother of yours for a good long time. Now, come on! Just you wait! I'm waiting, Silas! Come on! Jesus, man. This is deep. Here's my office. Come on, Nelly! No! You and your brother, you're the scum of the earth. Cody, here's the only one who has had the guts to say it to your face. Well, guess what? I'm saying it to your face right now, in front of all these people, and you are never going to hit me again. You're under arrest, holding for attempted murder. You understand me? <laughs> it's just where the hell you think you're going? I'm going to hell before I set foot under your roof again. If that marshal had any sense, he'd be locking you up too. You were in on it. Everybody saw it. Now, Nelly, we got the shooter in custody. She's going home with me, Silas. You want to do something about it? Now's the time. Come on, chicken shit. Nobody's going to step in. Take the first swing. Hell, I'll close my eyes for you. You ever lay a hand on her again, and you've got me to deal with. And you better be the one not getting caught out alone. Hey, come on, you come on, come on, that's enough. Okay, Cody, settle down. Homer pulled the knife. Cody didn't stab him, Silas. That dumbass fell on it, and you saw it. You heard me, Silas. I'll get you too, Abel. Your daddy's rolling over in his grave about now. Cody. I'm so sorry. Daddy was dying, and he, he pushed me into it. Not now. Nelly. No one is going to blame me for you. And you just saved the next person in the United States of America. Just to have it so fast. I'll see you at your Sunday. We'll talk then. I'd appreciate it if you would remind him that the marshal and everyone else heard him threaten us. And I might just be the one to shoot first if he starts anything. When there's two guys to drink him like that. They make each other crazy and crazy. I know, we've all seen it before. Sometimes an uh, apple falls a long way from the tree. You're right. I know Daddy's rolling his grave back now. <laughs> Tell Silas that when he calms down that this can end right here. It's up to him. And I, I hope Homer pulls through this. Give me those two for brothers. They say the Lord works in mysterious ways. Well, I suppose I should go look at her. Goodbye, Miss Nelly. Oh, you'll, you'll be seeing me around. Don't you worry about that. Uh, we're sure gonna miss you. I wish I could take you with me. Well, we all know that ain't gonna happen. Someday. Someday you'll be able to go wherever you want. You believe that? Fremont said it. It's coming. Yeah. I don't... I don't see no doctor's school in my future, but uh, I, I do thank you for teaching me how to read. Times are changing. Just you wait and see. I can't go on like this forever. I sure hope you're right, Miss Nelly. I expect I'd best be catching up to Master Silas. We had too much into it not to proceed. What am I here for? The coven warned you this would happen. Let me hear you say it. You will not speak to me in that tone of voice. All you've done is create another dangerous adversary. What? You shall see. When it is too late, you shall see. <laughs> Hey, 
Are you here to see free mom? Yes, yes ma'am, we this? are. Call me this ring, I'll take you to it. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Abel Kincaid. Abel. Cody Kincaid, sir. Pleasure, sir. Pleasure. Let me uh, introduce you to my uh, antagonist here, the uh, representative from Illinois, Mr. Abraham Lincoln. So your friends. The best. Yeah. Please be seated. So, I saw the whole thing. That man had his bead on me. If he hadn't knocked his hand away, I wouldn't be here. I thought they were bluffing at first. They get real mean when they're drunk. No, I did see that man strike you down. That was my husband, sir. Was. Yeah, we saw him pull a long barrel pistol out of his saddlebag. I know him, sir. He's always been a snake in the grass. We followed him up there. Well, the three of you worked through God today to keep me alive. Well, Nellie here, she's the one that stopped the shot. You guys arrived just in the nick of time. It's good to hear men with brains and backbone speak their mind. Either one of you will make a fine president. Well, thank you, sir. It's uh, the three of you saved my life today. So I'd like to do something for the three of you. <laughs> Is there something I can do? Anything? Anything? No, sir. We're just fine. No, I'm serious. I want to do something for you. Thank you, sir. You can talk some sense into these people and, you know, before we end up in an awful war. Well, that's a campaign promise I can keep. But uh, I do want to do something for the three of you now. Thank you, sir. No? I'll tell you. Barkeep. Drinks for my friends, please. Welcome to the Copper Canyon Saloon. It's so wonderful to have you here. What can I get for you? Beer. And a white wine, please. Tea, please. All right. Let me be the first to thank you for your service to our country. I'm overwhelmed, sir. He's okay. The Louisville Gazette. Uh, could I have your names? Hi, I'm Abel Kincaid. Nellie Morgan. Nellie Ensley. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, what what paper do you say this is? Louis, Louisville Gazette. One minute, please. I need to make a toast. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? After what just happened out there, I just have to propose a toast. Speaking for the entire town, we need to thank these great men who debated for us here today. Cheers! 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 So you're saying you love me? Well, yeah. Always have. She won't marry me. Well, if you're going to be little me and Abel, then yeah, we ought to be married. But I didn't see any of this coming, Nelly. So what is it? I know you're not afraid of Silas. I'm too old for you anyway, Nell. I had to face it. I gave up. It wasn't about the money, Cody. Are you telling me you loved him? You left, Cody. You went to St. Louis. You left me behind. You said you'd send for me, but you never did. Oh, and Daddy, he reminded me of that every day, every day. He was terrifying. I didn't know if you were ever coming back, Cody. Not coming back? Do you think your dad was throwing away my letters? How many letters did you get? Three. Oh. Just three. And then 
in silence. Oh. No. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Cody. I know God put me on this earth to be with you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how much money you have. I want you, Cody. I just signed up for the army now. And there's no getting out of it now. I leave in January. January? I talked it over with Abel. He can handle working around the farm and for Fargo Freight by himself. God, Cody. I'll help him. I'll help Abel. And I'll go back to teaching school. And I'll wait here for you. It's a three-year tour of duty now. It wouldn't be right to, to marry you and then just leave. I want you to know you've got something real waiting on you. I want to walk down that aisle with you, Cody Kincaid. You're married to Silas Morgan. Not no more, I ain't. I hope you burn in hell, Silas Morgan. to comfort you. Comfort me? Is that what you were doing when you made the sign of the cross on his forehead Saturday? Or was that your curse? Miss Morgan, it's only natural for emotions to run high in a situation like this. I think no one saw that. Your brothers asked for my blessing. I wonder why. Miss Morgan. The only thing that is going to get me through this day is the thought that there has to be a special place in hell waiting for you. Well, I don't understand your attitude at all. What's this about? Your brother died a gallant Christian warrior. He was so excited to be a lodge brother, wasn't he? He came home saying he was a knight now. Y'all made him feel like he fit in. Yes, we did. You planned to use him all along, didn't you? You and your secret, evil, barbaric organization. Let the jaw witted man do it. If he gets caught, he can't defend himself, and the judge will go easy on him. Morgan. No risk to any of you. Wasn't that your plan all along, Father? <laughs> I assure you that we had no plan. What? You're the judge, Morgan. <laughs> Anyone's ever poured their heart on your profession? Miss Morgan, what are you accusing me of here? Silas got drunk. Left his safe door open with a stack of papers on top. All about the Golden Circle. Where the money of the church really goes. Everything. <laughs> Names, dates, minutes to meetings. Oh, so this was a very good secretary. Now, Miss Morgan, you can't believe that. Well, oh, things can become so misconstrued. George Bickley. James Younger, several politicians, a whole list of people eliminated, secret plans, it was all right there. What do you intend to do with this information? 
What could you have me do? What can I do for you? You can go in there and do me a shreds, priest, and give my brother a decent burial. Well, I, I assure you, I will deliver a wonderful service. And then... You can fall on your knife. Well, Miss Morgan, well, I, I don't know what to say here. I think things have been grossly exaggerated. You, sir, are grossly exaggerated. I'm going to give you something to pray about. I'm going to let you know that I mailed those papers out three days ago. T -t to whom? How many times have I heard you preach that the truth will set you free? You're despicable. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you who are Father of all mercy and the God of all comfort, look with compassion, we pray, upon all gathered here today in your holy name. May a sense of heavenly nearness and the peace of Christ which surpasses all understanding manifest within this service to all in attendance here today. May our minds and our hearts be at your command. Amen. Life and death are one. Just as a river flows to the ocean, life passes through all of us from an eternal beginning to an eternal end. Try to imagine what it would be like to be surrounded by the glory of God, to have finally arrived at your heavenly home. That's where Homer Morgan is today. Lift up your hearts and be thankful and content for the time that he was here on this earth with us. And be grateful for what you may have been spared. We're here today to celebrate the life of Homer Leonard Morgan, the second son of Joseph and Pearl Morgan, survived by his older brother, Silas Lee, and younger sister, Brenda Sue Morgan. As we prepare ourselves to accompany Homer for his last ride up Calvary Hill, I would like to offer some observations on Homer's life, not only as his priest, but as his friend. We all knew Homer. We all looked out for him. But I want to tell you, there was a complexity in his character and a depth to his intellect that was often overlooked by the casual observer. Homer died for a cause, a cause he deeply believed in. He understood what it was like to be bullied, much in the same way that the North attempts to force its views on the South, he endured the same kinds of treatment 
throughout his life. Make no mistake, Homer understood the difference between our way of life and the ideas being imposed upon us from some distant central bully government. We all know what happened here last week. And I say to you that Homer Morgan represented a resistance, a force much bigger than one man. Radical? Yes, but necessary to convince our adversaries that we, as a people, will not bow down to their ideologies. And using whatever method necessary, we will preserve our heritage and our Christian way of life. Brother Morgan came to Sunday services every week. And I feel moved to point out today that our Lord used Homer just as he used the simple-minded to convey his word to the world. He spoke through shepherds. He spoke through fishermen, not the scholarly, not the studied, but through the simple man. I don't know what Bible our northern brethren preach from, but my Bible, the universal King James Holy Bible, says slavery was decreed by Almighty God. It is sanctioned in the Old Testament, the New Testament, and from Genesis to Revelation. It has existed in all the ages among all the people of the highest civilizations and the nations of the highest proficiency in the world. As the civilized world built great cities and worked in metals and created cathedrals and magnificent works of art, the Negro built huts of straw and hunted with clubs. It is our Christian duty to be the master over the lesser species of the world and to provide for their well-being. A reading from the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 44. Your male and your female bondsmen, your slaves, are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may buy some from temporary residents living among you and from members of their clans born in your country. And they will become your property. You can will them to your children as inherited property, and you can make them slaves for life. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5, our Lord says, Slaves, obey your masters with fear and trembling. Titus, chapter 2, verse 9, says, Tell the slaves to be submissive to their masters and to give them satisfaction in every respect. There is not one verse of Holy Scripture inhibiting slavery. It is not, then, we conclude, immoral. And so I ask you, do you believe all of it or just some of it? What? Do you believe all of it or just some of it? All of it or some of it? You got a lot of nerve coming in here today. 
I'm only here because Brenda asked Abel and me to be pallbearers. Yeah, and Nellie? She makes up her own mind. You ought to know that by now. Let's just get this over with, y'all. Yeah, because you got enough men for pallbearers. So what do you say, Silas? What can I say? Let's get him in the hearse. I can't go back home after this. I don't know where I'll go, but when Silas finds out what he did, he's gonna be furious. Y'all be on your own now with him. What did you do, Miss Brenda? What, what was that all about? I just let a warlock preach at my brother's funeral. That's what I did. What? The men at the lodge meetings they've been coming to are trying to start a war, and he's one of them. They're using witchcraft. Father Lyval? He's not who he says he is. His real name is Tristan Bell. His mother's a witch, and so is he. What? So Silas got drunk and left a stack of papers in the safe. He's a secretary in this organization that's trying to split up the country. They're called the Golden Circle. Abel, come on. We need you to Paul Bear. Okay. Let me go do this. He's in there with Silas. A warlock? He was only here to set up the assassination. That explains a lot. You probably got odd people into the saloon. Oh. oh, look! Look! He's running away! Go get him! Okay. Do you want me to go after him, Miss Brenda? Let him go. Good riddance to him. What are you doing here? The mother sent me. She told me to tell you to drop whatever it is you're doing and get you the hell out of here. Well, you got here in just a nick of time. Well, the horses are tied right around here. Let's go. Don't think this has changed anything, Kincaid. Oh, I'd never dream of it. Don't start, you two. Where's the priest? He just went out the side door. Is she mad? Well, he did get a shot off. She had a bad feeling about it. She never ceases to amaze me. What happened? Our secretary left all the documents laying out. His sister found them. And she mailed them to Lincoln or Fremont. Miss Bell, they're here. My son, my son, let me look at you. <laughs> The priest outfit's a bit disturbing. I can't wait to get this off. <laughs> he was in trouble when you got there, wasn't he? <laughs> yes, ma'am. He had three men chasing him. <sighs> Sit down. Sit down. You did well, my son. It just wasn't the time or the place. I had two years invested in that mission. You convinced them that you were a priest. You said the debates. You destroyed the bridge. You had the perfect shooter. Everything was set. We had the perfect little town. That bridge was the only way in or out of there. And burning it down, it made sure there was mighty few witnesses. It was all going according to plan until his sister-in-law hit the gun and knocked the shot off. The coven knew that something would go wrong. But we had to try tomorrow. The gypsy did warn us, but everything was in place. You made the right decision. No harm was done. No. Actually, serious harm was done. Something about some documents. What? Our secretary's sister found the minutes to the meeting and uh, financial ledger. She mailed them to either Lincoln or Fremont. There were lists. She mailed them four days ago. They could be anywhere by now. We got here as fast as we could. Billings! Fetch the wagon. We have to go to the telegraph office. Yes, ma'am. Do you think anyone will be there this late at night? We'll open the office ourselves if we have to. 
Billings, make it fast. Yes, ma'am. And don't you worry. They know that we're their enemies. If anything, this may confirm so that it motivates them to declare war. By the way, I have a welcome home present for you. Do you remember Penny Sizemore? From Mount Sterling. Yes. She wanted me to tell you that they have a shipment of Nigerians, and you are welcome to them if you want them, before the auction on Saturday. Right off the boat. Brenda Sue, get out of here. I want to talk to you. She's not here, Silas. What do you want? I want to talk to her. You must have found those papers were missing from your safe. You're damn right I did, and I want to know what she did with them. She sent them to John Fremont. John Fremont? No! Yes, she did, Silas. Except for something she said that will send you straight to be hung. She said you would know what that was. If you give us any trouble, she's taking it to John Brackenridge herself. I'm guessing you know what that was. Her and Nellie, they went up to Louisville. Then they're going up to Cincinnati. You'll never find her. But you'll be hearing from her. She's having Clover Bottom appraised, and she wants her half. She said you could buy her out or else. Thank you for coming here. What do you want? I want to give you some advice. And who are you to give us advice? Sindela has approved me for initiation. She expects you to do something about Nellie Ensley. You best not disappoint her. Nellie Ensley doesn't know anything about us. She only acted on the spur of the moment. I know. But Sindela expects you to retaliate. She didn't send me here to tell you that, but you should know. That's what she wants. Very well, then. We will. How did you impress Cinderella? My clairvoyance. And I eliminated some people for her. Well, welcome to the sisterhood. You'll have my congratulations after the initiation. Seasons and to the Knights of the Golden Circle. 
I swear, from this day forward, my soul is at your command. So be it. Awaken the goddess within. The goddess will awaken. 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 Stare into her eyes until you see the true reflection of yourself. Assassination, not a debate. But you interfered. And so rather than kill you, we decided on pain. Real pain. Extreme pain. <laughs> <laughs> Never interfere with us again. What did you do? We just killed your baby. <laughs> <laughs> you will have extreme suffering when you bring him into this world. Dead. And the spell begins.
are just not making their journey through this crazy time that we live in. And I pray that you're still alive. I, I moved in with my sister Kate and I sold the farm to Johnny Dalton. I'm not sure if my other letters made it to you or not, so I'll tell you again. Your son died at birth. We had a beautiful baby boy. Dr. Campbell did all he could, and, and he cried like a baby himself, because he couldn't save him. He just couldn't catch his breath. Abel is doing fine at Fargo Freight, and says to tell you he can get you a job there when you return. Just please return, Cody. I pray for you day and night, and I can't describe the feeling of incompleteness I get when I look out that window. Always yours. Lay down your rifle. I ain't never shot a man in the back before, but you could be the first. Sir. You again? You moved through the woods like the wind. Boys! Search him and take him back to camp. We ain't got time for no prisoners. I'll shoot that damn Yankee right now. No, he could have shot me in the back once before, but let me go. Remember the cannon story? Bob, you take him back. Yes, sir. Who want out of here? Guess I should be thanking you. You won't be thanking me when you see where you're going. 
try anything. The truth does not set you free. This vision is the truth, and it will haunt you through eternity. You need to learn to mind your own business, Cody Kincaid! Your son is going to be with us forever. Mary, it's been some time since I wrote you last. Papers, scares. Billy Gentry discovered the body of his brother Davey about a week before he lost his leg. Davy joined up with the Yankees, as you know, and I was beside him when he found the body. I heard Billy took two bullets to his knee, but continued shooting for more than an hour before they was able to carry him off. He'll be returning home soon. The day after battle is always worse than the battle itself. The horrified faces of the dead, the mutilated bodies, some of the injured but still alive are beyond my ability to describe. Our scouts reported they'd seen Yankees burn some of our boys alive. Oh, a great sin if we committed to find ourselves in this hell. The night before last, I dreamed of being home with you, sleeping under a peach tree loaded with fruit. The men of my regiment call a dream a home, a soldier's joy. They say this war will last for years. As for me, I had enough, but we'll continue to fight till the last minute. But no, when I do return home, I'll never leave your side again. I love you and I, I miss you. Your loving husband, Porter Jenkins. Porter, I hope this letter finds you in good health. I, however, am shaken and furious. I would be fighting by your side if they would let me. Union troops came through here yesterday. The most despicable excuses for human beings I have ever seen. I thought they were going to burn the house down. They took every chicken, our hog, both horses, and my grandmother's silver set. I'm glad there are men like you to put a stop to these scoundrels. I hope you can read this. My hands are still shaking. I love you, Mary. I don't have to tell you how sick you are. You got dysentery and God knows what else. Actually, that medicine's working. I feel a lot better. Well, that's good to hear. Take two spoonfuls of this four times a day, and it won't help you if you can't keep it down. So take it all. Thank you. Master Sergeant Kincaid. Yes, sir. You have been authorized and honorable discharge from the 47th Infantry Division of Kentucky. Thank you, sir. We have eight months of back pay for you. It's $152. Thank you, sir. You have friends in high places, sir. This box arrived for you this morning. We had to inspect it, of course. It's from John Fremont of the Pacific Railroad. In this box is a Colt revolver. Riding coat. A train ticket to Bowling Green, Kentucky. And a note that says there will be a horse waiting for you at Thompson's livery. Here's the bill of sale for the horse. Without blankets, and no holster. This right here. Get well, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Next. Well, glory be! 
it ain't Cody King Kane himself. Ooh. Must be my lucky day. You're sick, Silas. They sent me home. Is that right? If you get sick and tired and don't want to play war no more, you just come on back home, huh? Pretend the war's all over. I was in the prison in Atlanta. Half of my men died in there. If they hadn't surrendered when they did, I'd be dead by now, too. Well, ain't that just too bad? But the war ain't over, boy. And I just joined the Confederate Army. You had the guts to join the Army? Well, I'll tell you what, Silas. You got me. Just go on and shoot me. Hell, I'm tired of fighting to live anyway. Put one right there. Go on. Do it. Get him off that horse. It ain't gonna be that easy, Cody. First Reuben here is gonna break every bone in your body. And then Rastus, he's gonna whip your ass till he can't swing that whip no more. And then, then we're gonna hang you. Master Morgan, please don't make me do this, sir, please. Just take a man as a prisoner, sir. You'd be a hero, uh, have a prison before you even get your uniform. Hush, boy! This son of a bitch stole my wife and killed my brother! Please don't make me do this, sir. You wanna be whipped and rolled in rock salt again? You do what I tell you when I tell you to do it. Now, Rastus, you get that show. First thing, you break his knees so he can't run off. Just go on and shoot me, Silas. You know you want to. Hell, it's even legal now with you being a Confederate soldier and all. Whack his knees, Rastus. Ain't that some other way, boss? I got to do this. He'll take it out on my little girl. He stuck a hand in boiling water. <laughs> he ain't a little girl no more. This morning I sold her and Mammy to Sam Child. What? No! You ignorant son of a bitch! It didn't have to be this way! Go to hell, Silas Morgan! You'll fit in there just fine! Well, he won't hurt nobody else no more. He's about to turn the gun on you. I turned the shovel on him. Don't you worry. I'm gonna get Mammy and Ann back for you. Mr. Kincaid. You saved my life. You saved mine. Just plain ignorant. Fell for the oldest trick in the book. But please, tell Brenda what happened. When he went for that Derringer, I had no choice. It's all he's doing. Yeah, don't you worry. We'll tell everybody what happened. Well, the marshal wants to talk to me. I'll be with Abel. We'll let him know what happened. Don't you worry. Listen, you're gonna have your freedom, sir. Rebs are done. They're out of soldiers. <laughs> That's so. I knew they were scraping the bottom of the barrel when he joined up. They're sending young boys and old men to fight us. It's pitiful, really. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're back, sir. So he really did join the Confederate Army? Yes, sir. Just yesterday, came in all bragging about it. Said uh, Brenda Sue was going to be moving back in and that uh, we'd be answering the herder he got back. Then I'd call this an act of war. An act of war? I reckon so. <laughs> it's an act of war, sure enough. They can claim he died in battle. <laughs> but listen, make sure you uh, make sure Brenda knows, okay? It was him or me. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll tell everybody what happened. Uh, don't you worry, none. Uh, but uh, she won't be back till Saturday, Sunday. I really am sick. They were starving us in, in that prison. 
I just want to find a, a good place to lay down. I understand. I know you sick and want to lay down and all, but well, I got something pretty important I need to tell somebody. Go on. Silas has been having me and Reuben set up and clean up after the Golden Circle meetings. They act like we ain't even there. We hear it all. Yeah, they plan on taking the Yankee gold. They want to fight a different kind of war. Well, the one they're fighting now ain't working, I'll tell you that. They don't have it all worked out yet, but uh, they got another big meeting tomorrow night. You think you could get in there without Silas? Nobody knows he's dead except us. We could just show up like always, go to work, tell him he's sick. Okay, don't get caught. You really need to take care of this body. Go find out all you can. After the meeting, come to Abel's. I'll write it all down and make sure that John Fremont gets it. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, by the way, it was the colored troops that took the Battle of Nashville. <laughs> My boys. Oh! I thought you was a child's play. Mammy is. I ran away. Master Silas is dead! Master
seems that we are missing our secretary. May I have permission to speak, ma'am? Yes. Master Morgan is down with the crew, but he regrets that he won't be able to join you today. Very well, okay. Leroy, you take our minutes for tonight. Thank you, Madam Chairman. All right, the meeting will come to order. Buckner, why don't we start with your report? <clears throat> the Rothschilds are still fuming over Lincoln's greenbacks. Cuba, Mexico, the West Indies, they're never going to join us if we don't have a stable economy. Yes, we are acutely aware of their position. Yes, Leroy. The French have pulled 11,000 troops out of Canada. France is disgusted that Davis wouldn't use them. And now, we are totally on our own. Capturing the Northern Gold Reserves is our only chance of survival. Lampton. We conclude the war can only continue a few more weeks before the men desert in droves. They're hungry. They lack elements. Quite frankly, hope. And we have tried to warn them time and time again not to attack. And we have warned them of disaster after disaster. And they've all but lost the war. Jefferson Davis and his advisors are refusing to accept our premonitions and continue to make very, very bad decisions. So, the time has come. The coven says we will take this into our own manner. Yes, and you all probably know, many of our major contributors to the circle must be kept secret. However, they have authorized me to share with you today their plan. And how is that? Cast a spell on the Yankees and march 5,000 men into cannon fire? No more from you, Buckner. I'm sorry. P please forgive me. I know they don't take your advice. You're not funny. One would think that you would have known that please, by now. Please forgive me, Madam. Sir. Please, I'm sorry. Very well. Here's the plan. We forge our own orders, send them through normal military channels, and then we move a few hundred of our men covertly to our targets. Dressed in plain clothes, we move them by ships, trains, whatever. And then they arrive at their specified time and place. Imagine if we send in a thousand men, divide it into three attack groups, and the fourth takes out the telegraph wires to the major cities. They all attack at the same time on the same day. They bomb and they burn all the telegraph offices and the newspaper offices. Communications across the North will be cut off. Just a few determined men in the major cities could create chaos and confusion. And then we descend on the mints and boil depositories that night. But, but there's no way. Only a thousand men? <laughs> the depositories are all inside forts. Medea, why don't you tell them about the smoke bombs? Yes. We have a new weapon. We have created a new bomb that has poisonous smoke. And all we have to do is get close enough to light it and let the wind carry it from there. Yes, Leroy. We could ship the parts and chemicals right under their nose as regular freight. Taken individually, no one would ever suspect what the parts would be used for. Then our men could assemble the bombs right on site. We could position them close, light them, and run. They'll burn out the eyes and lungs of our enemies. <laughs> <laughs> and then our men will go in and take the gold. How devious. <laughs> well, what's your opinion, Lambton? I like it. And with the communications down, we have a chance to get it out and move it south. Mm -hmm. How many reserves are you planning on sending in? Three. 250 men each unit. 
That's 250 men per target and 250 spread out all over the north to take out the telegraph lines and newspapers. James. We have a solid plan, and we are ready to kidnap Lincoln. But they are sure to raise their guard when this goes through. And we have to get to him first. But, but you know, James, this could work if we all agree today to implement this operation, you have until April the 15th. We will make this a good Friday. <laughs> <laughs> the target is the 14th. Lincoln has already set up a cabinet meeting with Grant that day. And we've already hypnotized two of his guards. So we have an elaborate plan underway right now. Yes, we know that. That's why we want the attack to be on the night of the 15th. That gives us one day to get the news about Lincoln out, and then we move to silence everything. Terror. We create terror. And for those of you who missed the last meeting, we're going to humiliate the Yankees by kidnapping Lincoln. And after we toy with him, we'll trade him for the release of our troops being held prisoner. Yes, and you might also like to know that we have successfully penetrated the sleep of Mary Todd Lincoln, and she is going quite insane. <laughs> and Abraham is so unsure of himself now, we have him attending seances in the White House. He's totally susceptible to so, our suggestions. So, there is hope. Yes. 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 And I have another weapon I'd like to report and suggest we use in this operation. We have developed a very explosive compound, 10 times more powerful than gunpowder. We've hollowed out hunks of coal, and we've filled them with it. All our men have to do is throw them onto a coal pile and wait for them to shovel it into their furnaces. We'll destroy trains, ships, shut down factories, anything that runs on coal. We could drop them in coal yards or rail cars, anywhere headed north hitting random targets. Again, created panic. <laughs> terror. We'll create terror. Brilliant. I love it. What a wonderful weapon. So, do I hear a motion that we move to implement this operation and to approve the funding? So moved. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 So moved. <laughs>
I know. You told us all about it. Let's go in. The kid saw him tied over the horse before we could even get him to the barn. They started yelling he was dead and Brenda heard it, came out. I'm so sorry, Brenda. It's okay. They told me how it all happened. I had no choice. I understand, Cody. Really. What happened? I killed Silas. You what? He caught me just outside of town and had his gun on me. Then he ordered Reuben and Rastus to hang me. After we broke every bone in his body and whipped him. But Cody tricked him, shot him through his hat. He was really going to do it, Miss Nellie. It was an act of war, ma'am. Silas had joined the Confederate Army. I thought the ball hit the metal button on his coat and didn't go in too deep. But then he pulled a Derringer on me. It's really a wonder it didn't happen sooner with someone else. I've already arranged for a pack of tomorrow. I'll be there. I'm so sorry, Brenda. It's okay. I, I always thought something like this would happen to him. Well, I sure am sorry. Oh, all right. All right, Cody, you know, enough of that. You all have to listen to this. I had sent them on to the Golden Circle meeting, and you have to hear what they found out. And then we have to get to the telegraph office right away. So, there's two meetings, really. One inside and one outside. Uh, one group wants to kidnap Lincoln, the other one wants to kill him. On April the 14th, they got a lot of people involved in it. And they're going to send an army up north dressed in plain clothes to make some kind of smoke bomb and steal the gold. Oh, Jesus. Did you get any names? Oh, yeah. We got everything from the meeting inside. There was four that hung out out back. I uh, didn't hear too much of them because we didn't want them to think that we might be listening in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one was Rothschild and the other was Bush. They were the type to call each other Mr. You know, Mr. This and Mr. That. Ah, money men, big money men. They're talking about starting the Bank of Texas, the Bank of Georgia, one in every state, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the bunch that just wanted to kill Lincoln. On April 16th, they're going to burn all the newspapers and telegraph offices they can, cut down telegraph lines. Then, that night, hit where the Yankees keep their gold with the poison bombs. Poison bombs? Smoke bombs, poison smoke. Well, that's only half of it. They got witches working with them. Be careful. What? I've I've seen them. Yeah. Witches? Mm-hmm. The witch, Cindella Bell, they say she can give someone scarlet fever. They had three of them at the meeting. They been putting spells on Lincoln's wife, driving her crazy and stuff. And they can hypnotize people. You heard that? Yeah. I'd rather fight the whole Confederate army and fight any of them. How did we all get involved in this anyways? Fate, little brother. That and Nellie saving Fremont's life. Tell me you've come to get me out of here. We have. It's about time. I hate masquerading as a priest. I had the information we needed a month ago. I can't stand to listen to one more parishioner whine in the confessional. Well, how about overseeing a shipment of gold instead? Mm. The circle is getting ready to move the entire Confederate gold reserve to safety. Our safety. Sandella is putting the two of you in charge of the main shipment from Richmond to Baton Rouge. We're moving it, not the army. Now, how did that happen? Sandella got Tamara a job cooking at Jefferson Davis's house, and she poisoned his food. <laughs> and Emilda con convinced him that he was under a spell and was sending him to Tonson. Sandella? 
So we have the entire gold reserve of the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We are, quote, moving it to safety. Right now it's hidden in Lawrenceburg, Virginia. Robert Lee abandoned Richmond yesterday and is in full retreat. If he loses another battle, Davis has ordered him to surrender. Hmm. These are your instructions. We have bribe money, shipping orders, pass passwords, contacts, maps, everything you'll need. Your entire route has the plan. What's going on with the gold reserve raids up north? We are organized to attack their mints a few days after the surrender, as soon as they've let their guard down. Lee cannot win another battle. Mabry and Buckner are overseeing another shipment. The coven and the circle will meet in Baton Rouge and divide it all. You're going to be very rich. And you have a train to catch in a little over an hour. Redmond, let's go. Thank you, Sam. You didn't have to do this. Yes, I did. Time for changing. I'm changing. That's just what I paid for them. Mr. Kincaid, I thank you. I thank you, sir. Beg Master Morgan not to sell us, not to take us from my masters. I just work hard for you, sir. No, no, you won't. It was Cody that did this. He's just too sick to come himself. So these belong to Cody? No. Cody says you're free now. Free? You and Ann both. Brenda says you can come stay at Clover Bottom if you would like. Free? Cody says Rasta saved his life and this is payback. He had several months of back pay from the army and some money he set aside before he left. And <laughs> he's the luckiest man to ever sit down at a poker game. Yeah. Us free! Us free! And so is Anne. No one can never take her from me! Never! Never. She's free. <laughs> gonna get you free too. I was gonna work. I was gonna save every penny until you free too. Miss Brenda gonna make it right. You'll see she's gonna make it right. If Miss Brenda don't have something for you to do, you can come work for me <laughs> and I'll pay you. Mr. Charles, Mr. Kincaid, Someday, somehow, I promise, I'm gonna do something real special for both of y'all. Don't worry about it, you already have. Cody says if you hadn't distracted Silas, he never would have got his gun. That gunshot saved my life. If I'd have killed him, it'd have been murder. Ann, let me see your hand. It's okay, honey. Show, show me your hand. Pastor Morgan didn't like the way Daddy shined his shoes. So he did this to you? Yes, sir. He did it to make Daddy feel bad. Let's go home. Morning, Cody. Morning. Appreciate you coming in on such short notice. No problem, Mr. Hackworth. Miss Joni, good to see you, and thanks again for hiring me. I appreciate you being here. I understand you've been doing a fine job for us. We just hope running freight's not too boring for you. Oh, no, that's perfect. I'm ready for boring. All I've ever wanted is a house full of kids. Well, that Nellie's quite a catch. Cody, this here's James Mayberry. He's going to be riding shotgun for you today. Mr. Kincaid. Good to meet you, sir. You look familiar. Do I know you? Well, I'm from Louisville. You ever spend any time up there? No, I've never been there. 
Well, you ain't missing nothing except that old river. Since when do I need somebody riding shotgun? I've never seen papers like this before. This runs classified special priority post haste. Cody, there's a boat waiting for you in Paducah. This cargo needs to be there by six o'clock tomorrow evening. If you get it there, it's a $20 bonus for you. So a Sunday run and a $20 bonus. What's the rush? A $20 bonus. It's in writing. These horses are fresh, but they're not ours. We had them brought in Friday night. Who's we? The Fargo Freight, special priority. So you work for a special department of Fargo Freight? No. What? My orders are to get this wagon to Paducah tomorrow night by six o'clock to the boat. Your orders? Yes, sir. Who do you take orders from? I just gotta get this wagon to Paducah by six o'clock tomorrow night. Not give out information, sir. Fargo Freight authorized you to be my gunner. Yes, sir. Who drove this wagon here? They didn't know him. This wagon's carrying hell of a load. What am I hauling here, Bobby? Honestly, I don't know. All I got is paperwork. We made it this far. Where'd this coach come from? <laughs> Since when did we start carrying men in a freight coach? They're here to guard the freight, sir. Boring, huh? Come on out. The boys, relieve yourself and make your pay. Friendly bunch. Just nervous. So the Confederacy's out of wagons, huh? What the hell's so heavy back there? It's gonna be a long night, sir. You need to get your men out of there and have them walk. Take some weight off. They can't be seen. That's why we hired a Fargo Freight. Yeah, it's gonna be a damn long night. Why, Shorty Kincaid. We used to call him Shorty when he was just a kid. Can't call you Shorty any longer. Nope. Well, we need you just to sign this log sheet. So, there's nothing. And we'll get you right back out on the trail. Special delivery. Post days. Thanks, sir. I packed you some vittles. They said enough for eight men. That's right, ma'am. I'm a big eater. Take one hell of a blacksmith to fix that. We gotta get it fixed. We gotta be at that boat at six o'clock tomorrow night and ain't no stopping. Well, there's a good wheel right in Ledbetter, maybe about a half a mile away. But I don't see us making it to Paducah about tomorrow night. There's no way. By God, we have to. Private Ryan, you're in charge now get back. Do you understand? Yes, sir.
It's a warning, sir, from the spirit world. You must negotiate a truce with the Confederacy. A warning? Yes, sir. I see no future for you otherwise. Only blackness. You, ma'am, are a charlatan and a very bad one at that. It's you who asked me for my advice. And now I'm giving you some advice. Repent. Otherwise, you are the one with the future of blackness. Now, off with you. You have a very short future, sir. Go. Leon, escort her out, all the way out. Yes, sir. That was a threat. She scares me. Roy! Yes, sir. I was right. I'll have my best men follow her, sir. Sir, this is an emergency. We need a new hitch pin or this will return. And I got $20 for you right here to go. You know this man? No, but it's a legit run. Go away right here. There, that'll pull a ton easy. Sorry y'all gotta walk back. My buckboard's got a busted wheel on it. Thanks, Jeb. And send a bill to a Fargo Freight. That's who really owes you. You can knock on my door anytime, Cody Kincaid. Kincaid, I seen a telegraph office up here. I think we ought to go up there so I can send a telegraph to Little Turtle to let them know we're going to be late. All right, I need to send one to Fargo for A2. You fellas are up bright and early. What can I do for you? Yes, sir, and I need to send a telegram out immediately. All right. This is to the Western Union office in Paducah. Okay. It's to the captain of the little turtle that's anchored there. We'll be eight hours or more late. All right. Is that it? That'll be it. All right. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Good, man. Made it out of war. Good deal. All right. I need to send one to the Western Union office in Hoptown. All right. Okay. Broken axle. Replaced by Jeb Anderson and Ledbetter. Yes, sir. Is that it? That's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Union Army, Post Reedland, Kentucky. Confederate gold shipment. Broken down Fargo freight wagon, three miles west of Ledbetter. Six guards.
there's a wagon coming! It looks like he came. What happened? The Fargo freight put me right back in the middle of the war. We got we got a telegram from Reedland. They said that they intercepted one of our coaches. And they were carrying a Confederate gold shipment. Yeah, they said the wagon had broken down and there was no driver. What happened? You had me carrying five Confederates. When what, the coach was so heavy it broke the yoke. And one of them was in on the assassination attempt of John Fremont in Hoptown a few years ago. What? You remember the guy with the whip that distracted the guards so Homer could take a shot? That's right. I knew he looked familiar. A Union squad attacked the coach. I tried to take cover, but a, a stray bullet ricocheted hit me in the leg. I fell down, hit my head, and when I came to it, it was all over. So, what about the Confederates? They're all dead, laying back there. Lee surrendered. Lee surrendered? Yeah, the war's over. Come on, boys. Let's get him inside. Let me look at that leg. Miss Brittany, have you heard? Well, we had the church bells ringing. The war is over. Lee surrendered. Thank God. Amen. Is Abel here? No, he left just about as soon as he got here. Uh, an F. Fargo freight messenger came for him. Was something about a, a priority run. The war is over in the North One. I can't wait to tell everyone. Look at this. No one knows I had it. What did you do? It's Confederate, but there's no longer a Confederacy. They tried to smuggle it across the Union line in a Fargo freight wagon, but they got caught by me. Glory be. They sent five guards and four crates of gold, but the wagon was too heavy and it broke a hitch pin. When we went to Ledbetter to get it fixed, I was able to sneak a note to the telegraph operator there. How did you end up with all this? A Union squad from Fort Reedland attacked the wagon, but the Rebs knew they were coming and hid these two crates. I ran into the woods, but a rifle ball ricocheted and hit me in the leg. I fell and hit my head. When I came to, it was all over. And you saw where they hit it? Yeah. The Union troops slaughtered them. But they didn't know how much gold was there. They only got the two crates off the coach. How rich you gonna be, Mr. Cody? Very. But I'm gonna spread it around. I'm gonna give half of it to Abel. I'd say there's probably 120 pounds of gold in each crate. Uh, but how are you gonna spend all this? You can't just walk into a bank and expect them to change over 240 pounds of gold bars. I'd say this is a job for John Fremont. He's been keeping his eye on me ever since Nellie knocked off that shot Homer tried to pull. Well. He is a politician. He he would know people. I'll send Ruben and Rastus over there to talk with him, but no telegraph. Perfect. And I'm sure he'd like to hear more about the Golden Circle meetings firsthand. But still, Cody, how are you going to explain all this money? Well, I'm thinking of double wedding in New York City. We won't have to explain anything to anybody there. I never wanted a rich man. 
I just needed a good man. Well, I'll let Abel propose and speak for himself, but as of right now, I'd say you have both. <laughs> Mrs. Abel Kincaid in New York City. I sure would like to see that, Miss Brenda. <laughs> Okay, gentlemen, once again, thank you for your help. Thank you for that information. Tell him that we can't accomplish what he's asking, but it will take some time to make the proper arrangements. Yes, sir, Mr. Fremont. And also tell him to bring it here. That way we can keep it secure. And uh, if he wants to, he can stay here under our protection. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Be careful. I'll send for the trip back. I've got you some biscuits, fried chicken, and a little bit of strawberry jam. Oh, bless you, ma'am. Don't have a safe journey. Thank you. Sir, I'm here to see uh, John Fremont. I heard I could find him here. Well, first thing you need to do, son, is hand me that gun. Oh, sure, I'm sorry. I understand. Uh, tell him Monty Delmonico's here. I think he'll remember me. I have something really important to tell him, sir. Good and all night to get here. He's with some people right now, but I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Sir, first off, I want to take you up on that job offer. But the reason I'm here is I heard and saw some things last night that make me think uh, Major Buford Polk is a traitor, sir. Major Buford Polk? Yes, sir. The Union officer? Yes, sir. I wrote all night to tell you this. Okay. I, I've been helping out the vet at Ridland, mm -hmm. and we were in there last night delivering a colt. And uh, I heard and saw some stuff. The, the, the way I get it was the, the fort received a telegram about a broken down a Fargo freight wagon hauling a load of Confederate gold. Mm. Polk sent his men out there. They massacred the guards. They came back with their saddles full of gold. And I heard him whispering to somebody, I couldn't really tell what they were saying or who he was talking to, but I heard him say, that's only half of it. He sent his man back out there looking for another bunch of gold. And you say you heard this with your own ears? Yes, sir. And I saw the gold. With there. your own eyes? Yes, sir. Saddlebags full of gold bars. Hmm. Now, how would a Union officer know how much gold was in a Confederate shipment. He sent it back out there saying there was only half of it. Hmm. And why are the Confederates moving the gold in a regular Fargo freight wagon and not a Confederate army wagon, sir? Huh. Okay. Okay. I wrote all night to tell you this. Okay. You think you can make it back out to Hop Town today? Sure, yeah, I feel good. I feel good. Okay. You're now officially one of my guards. Oh, thank you, sir. Okay. I'll never let you down. I know you won't. I know you won't. Okay. You need to head on out to the Kincaid farm. Now, if you run across Rastus and Reuben, arm them and let them ride with you. Okay? Yes, sir. But you got to get to the farm before they do before the circle does yes sir bring back cody 
bring back his brother, bring back the women. Those ages also? Yes. If they get there and they don't find Cody, they will take the women hostage. I won't let that happen, sir. I know you won't. Good morning, ma'am. Would you like an apple, orange, potato? You're right, they're here. My crystal never lies. Hurry, go to the church and ring the bell 13 times. That's the signal. Our men are standing by waiting to attack. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be in Baton Rouge. They sent a telegram shortly after you left. Buckner is moving it, so they sent me here. Good. Go to the church, ring the bell 13 times. That's the signal for our men to attack. They won't suspect you there. Is Tristan here? No. He's in Washington, keeping an eye on Lincoln. I must reiterate this warning. They will be relentless. You should know that Mabry was not killed at Mill Creek. What? No. The bullet merely grazed him. I checked him. I thought it was a headshot. It didn't look like he was breathing. We hear that other than being in a lot of trouble for losing 440 pounds of gold and the hide on the side of his head, he's fine. And I'm told the Golden Circle knew that the Confederacy was about to surrender. They took the gold under the pretense that they were guarding it. They hypnotized Jefferson Davis, and he signed the papers for them and not the Army to transport the gold reserves. So they will find out Cody was driving the wagon that day? Mm, yes. If they didn't find him, they would have captured you all. So, you cannot allow yourself to be captured. Not a one of you. There's evil ones leading this. And there's no telling what they will do to you. Our informants tell us the Union Army only got two boxes of gold. But somehow they knew there were four. And so they will all be after you. And Brenda, you should know that your brothers fell into a sinister organization. I know. So we can't go home. No. They will track you till your dying day. My advice to y'all is to change your names and then be as hard as possible to find. I was afraid this was something they stole from up north. No. They never attack the mints. This is Confederate gold. And there is no more Confederacy. Yes. Now, I have my banker friends from the railroad. They're raising some cash for me. They will offer you a fair exchange rate. But it will take some time, maybe a week. We understand, sir. You can take the money and hide, try to live happily ever after. But no, they will never, never stop looking for you. So, I, I, I can never go back to Cloverbottom? No, I'm afraid not. If they found you there, they would torture you to get information about that goal. And then they would kill you. But... I can't have my attorneys handle the sale of the property. They will do it so that you are safe. I can promise you that. I want those slaves set free. But what, what would become of them? Let's, uh, you know, let's sign the farm over to, to Reuben. And they can start there. And then send Rasses off to be a doctor. 
It's fine by me, and we can't stay there. Erastus will make a great doctor. What? Brenda, the information that you provided was far more influential to the outcome of the war than you know. And Cody, as for you, I've had my eye on you for a long time. I can't thank you enough for all the help you gave me when they released me from the Army. We saw your name the moment it landed on the list at Andersonville Prison. But the war isn't over yet. It's just moved and is more intense on a different battlefield now. So, Nellie, I saw you graduated summa cum laude at Tusculum. Yes, sir. A lot of good it's done me, though. We would like to discuss with all of you the idea of you becoming agents within our organization. Sir, I have some terrible news. Yes, sir. President Lincoln died at 7.22 this morning. Stop. Single gunshot wound to the head. Stop. Awaiting your instructions. Stop. Sir, this is from Ulysses Grant. surrounded in no time. This isn't going to end well. We have gas bombs. No, let's keep them secret. I have a squad that'll be here in just a few minutes. Hey, there's, there's that gypsy. The one that was, was, she was there the day they tried to shoot you. She tried to poison me. Oh my God. That's the man in my nightmares. He's real. Initiate the escape. Trap door! Chairs! 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 No! No! No, 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 no! 